Hello my friends and welcome to the part 2 video. There is still a lot of work on this Bluetooth speaker so let's just jump into it. This is the top panel. I added a layer of wood glue on it so the self-adhesive plastic standoffs will stick to the panel better. I will mount the Bluetooth amplifier board under the top panel with the antenna facing forward. The weak Bluetooth signal will travel over all the obstacles, like speaker drivers and wires, so they will not interfere with the signal. Unlike the old design where I mounted the board on the bottom panel, this modification will give the Bluetooth speaker a longer range. I will temporarily remove the Bluetooth board because I need to cover the panel with some damping material. For that I bought a few sponges, I will cut them into pieces with a thickness of 1 cm. Except under the Bluetooth board, where there is room for pieces of sponge only 6 mm thick, it's still better than nothing. I prefer to solder the wires instead of using the small connectors, and it's easier to do this outside the box. I will add a small amount of glue for the front panel, I don't want the glue to be squeezed outside and ruin the black paint. If you think this glue is not enough, I will add some more in the back of the panel, so calm down. And the panel is also tightened with 4 screws, which actually have another more important purpose, as you will see in a few minutes. Now I can mount the Bluetooth board back. These 6mm bolts are only meant to hold some potentiometer knobs. I will remove the rubber pads from the old box, clean them a bit, and fix them with sticky tape on the new box. But what about the battery? The old one was not properly maintained. Now I have these lithium ion cells from an old laptop battery, I think. I need to test them first. I gave them a few cycles at 700 mA with my Opus charger and they have a capacity of about 2000 mAh. To make a 1S3P battery pack I got these plastic 18650 battery holders. The cells will be connected with 0.12mm nickel strips using my DIY spot welder. I will cover the battery pack with Kapton tape to insulate the terminals. The battery is finished. It has a capacity of 6000mAh, another improvement over the old Bluetooth speaker. I need a small push button to turn the speaker on or off. For this project I will mostly use 0.75mm square wires. I want to thank all my patrons for their support. If you want to see these videos a few days earlier and more DIY videos and updates about my future projects, please check out my Patreon page. The quality inspector is checking the components for the next step. Last time I covered the charging module with a piece of sponge, which was a bad idea, because the TP4056 IC gets very hot when charging with one amp, it needs air around it to cool down. This time I will stick the module above the sponge insulation on the plastic battery holder. I'll also add a sticky heatsink on the IC, and don't worry about hitting the lithium ion cells, there is some space between the cells and the charging module. The battery pack will be mounted on the bottom panel with sticky foam tape. No hot glue will be used on this project, that's the lazy man's adhesive. This Bluetooth amplifier board already has a boost converter included, so the battery will power the Bluetooth module directly, there is no need for an extra boost converter. The charging port is next, I will replace the old micro USB port with a USB Type-C panel mount connector. There is one more hole I need to fill, with a bicolor LED. The speaker box needs a handle, so I bought one made of synthetic leather. It only needs two bolts. The old speaker box had a common enclosure for both speaker drivers. Now I want separate enclosures for the left and right channels. I cut the middle panel to fit even the wires glued on the back of the front panel. I'll add a lot of wood glue now. It's a bit tricky to position it exactly in the middle. These 10 mm thick pieces of sponge will be used as damping material. I measured and cut the pieces to the required size and will glue them to the MDF panels. 
I want to cover with sponges as much surface as possible. The sound insulation is finished. The entire room smells like paint thinner from the glue. I need to take a break or I'll start laughing for no reason. To insulate the back panel I bought this foam tape that my assistant is showing you. In my old project I used double sided sticky foam tape, but now I want to be able to open the box if needed. Quality control check. The back panel will be held in position with a lot of small screws, including screws in the middle panel. These are the exterior dimensions of the speaker box. According to this online calculator, the speaker enclosure should be made with an internal volume of 5.61 liters for each speaker driver. My new Bluetooth speaker with separate enclosures has an internal volume, excluding the middle panel and wood sticks, of 4.3 liters for each speaker driver. It's still smaller than the recommended size, but better than the old design. The Bluetooth speaker is functional and ready to use, but it needs some finishing touches. For a more retro look I got these potentiometer knobs. They should be white, but I found only silver ones. I will just screw them onto the 6mm bolts. Next it needs a front cover to imitate an old radio, so I made this frame out of 3mm MDF matching the holes in the front panel, but with larger holes. I made some 6mm partial holes in the corners, where I will mount some tiny but very strong neodymium magnets. I will glue the magnets in position with two parts adhesive. I got this cloth bag from a local, uh, let's say, juice store. It's strong, very thin and it has the right texture to make a front cover. So I cut a piece from it and I will use super glue to fix it to the frame. But I need to make sure it's stretched on the frame and hold it in position until the glue dries. This radio looking speaker it's kind of sad without a radio tuning band. To make it look better I'll add three thin pieces of white and grey vinyl. It's a cheap way to imitate a radio band from the distance. The front cover is finished and it's very easy to mount it. The magnets will hold it in position. That's the primary purpose of the screws in the front panel. And I can easily take it off and brag about it to my friends. This cloth cover is very thin, so it will not affect the sound. The retro Bluetooth speaker is finally finished. It took me two weeks to build it, in parallel with my daily job. The only thing I don't like about it is the startup sound and the Bluetooth connection sound. Charging the 6000 mAh battery takes about 7 hours and when the battery is fully charged the red LED turns green. But it's not recommended to fully discharge the battery, so the charging time will always be shorter. Let's test the speaker. I don't have a soundproof room so I made this fluffy corner here. The rest of the room is also covered with blankets and socks. Ok, that's nice. The bass is pretty loud. Let's go outside now. It sounds very clear and the bass is stronger than the old speaker. That's because I invested a lot in this project. This was not one of those cheapest Bluetooth speaker videos. All the components for this project cost around 90 US dollars and I also invested in new tools. This is the list of improvements I brought to the new Bluetooth speaker. And of course it looks better too. 
So this is my heavy retro Bluetooth speaker. If you enjoyed this video, please share it, leave a comment below and I'll see you soon. Bye!